this very moment, predators invisible to the naked eye are infiltrating your world. Your defenses will be useless against their awesome force. They will cause grotesque disfiguration, make you bleed out of every orifice, and even shut down the vital organs in your body. They will do almost anything to survive to fight another day, even if that means killing you. We have no idea what potential they have to create serious disease. What scares me the most is where the next killer microbe is going to come from and what form it will take. Venture into the dangerous world of killer germs. Bacteria, viruses, and parasites all have one thing in common. They're germs, Mother Nature's oldest and tiniest creatures that are only visible through a microscope. Countless numbers of these microorganisms lurk all around us. Many are benign. Some are even helpful to us, like probiotics, which are good bacteria that live in our stomachs and crowd out the bad bacteria. But there are others that frighten the living daylights out of us because they can violently kill. Based on their potential to produce global diseases and human suffering, here are 10 of the scariest germs on our planet today. At number 10, Group A Streptococcus, which causes flesh-eating disease. A vacation to Hawaii was supposed to be a fun and relaxing getaway for Gary Aguiar and his family. But lurking in this tropical paradise was a microbial predator ready to claim its next victim. During a snorkeling excursion, Gary sustained minor scrapes on his shin from the coral underwater. I was walking away from the shore and on my right leg I noticed there was one scratch that was particularly deep and there was some blood coming out of it. But I figured I'd go over and shower off and uh, you know in the warm sun in Hawaii it just kind of dried and then I didn't think anything of it. Within 48 hours Gary came down with a violent flu-like sickness so severe he was rushed to the hospital. Now I can actually remember the doctors coming in and telling me that you have an infection, it's in your leg, and we need to cut it out. The grizzly bacterium, Group A strep, had somehow penetrated through the coral wound on Gary's shin and spread like wildfire. It was causing necrotizing fasciitis, better known as flesh-eating disease. It's extremely rare, up to 1,200 cases per year in the U.S. But what makes it so scary is that up to a third of those cases result in death. Once inside the body, group A strep immediately begins multiplying. Bacteria live to reproduce, and these single-celled microbes carry all the machinery needed for their growth and multiplication. But contrary to popular myth, Group A strep doesn't literally eat flesh. It multiplies in skin tissue, releasing toxins or proteins that destroy healthy tissue. This allows bacteria to get deeper into tissue to feed on it in order to further replicate. When bacteria are in a dead tissue, there's no way that tissue can send off signals to say, hey, come fight off this infection. And there's no way that white blood cells can get in because dead tissues don't send in signals to ask the immune system to come to the rescue. Also, dead tissue doesn't allow antibiotics to go in. Antibiotics need to come in through the bloodstream. So antibiotics won't get into those dead tissues either. Because antibiotics can't get to the group A strep to destroy it, the only treatment is surgery, involving radical removal of the dead muscle and tissue containing the bacteria. The disease is called necrotizing fasciitis because the bacterium causes inflammation of the fascia, the membrane separating muscles. 
You think of the muscles as your orange wedges. The fascia are the stuff outside that the coating of those wedges. The bacteria can travel along those fascial planes rather than marching necessarily through the muscle, can travel along those areas and travel relatively quickly. If the destructive germs are not surgically removed, some can escape into the bloodstream where they can freely attack almost any part of the body. To try to fight off these infections, the body can release chemicals called cytokines and other sort of signalers that cause people to have fluid leaking out of the bloodstream and into the lungs or can shut down people's kidneys or hurt their livers. And this is exactly what happened to Gary Aguiar. Before surgeons could remove all the dead tissue, bacteria had already invaded his bloodstream and were attacking vital organs. I continued to have kidney failure. I was on con continuous dialysis. And then I began to have lung failure and then heart failure. My brother flew out from the States and he and my wife got a Catholic priest and I was given the last rites. It looked like Group A strep had taken another life. But after over 40 days in the hospital, Gary miraculously survived only to confront what the bacteria had left behind. My leg was just covered with these huge wounds. It was like from a horror movie. It's a very severe illness. Those that survive, the doctors often have to cut out chunks of tissue, muscle, often whole limbs to save the patients. They're not the same person afterwards. And even if they don't lose an arm or a leg, that arm or leg may not work as well because many of the critical muscle groups were killed by the infection. With so much muscle removed, athletic endeavors are now painful for Gary. Here's the backside of my leg here. This is the, the, the major wound that everybody notices. This is the, uh, the upper, upper calf here where they obviously removed a lot of material out of here. And so there's a muscle in here that kind of bulges out and this is numb in here. Group A strep is a common bacterium that exists everywhere. At this very moment, it's harbored in the throats of millions of Americans and for unexplained reasons doesn't cause any harm to most of them. But if it comes in contact with an open cut, the beastly germ can cause deadly flesh-eating disease. It probably could live at least several days on surfaces, you name it. It can live on tables, doorknobs, handles. Um, it's even been found living in seawater. Well, there's a lot of bacteria around that you can pick up from people. In my heart of heart, I think I contracted it in the water. Group A streptococcus is a ghastly bacterium. But there's another germ that can be even scarier. Working out at the gym. In the past, it kept you healthy. Now, it could be hazardous to your health. Number nine, MRSA. A man wipes down a sweaty exercise machine.